So hey there everyone, as always, thanks for stopping by and hanging out for a few. My name is Rich, I'm the channel host, and normally we're talking about building our small drone businesses, and so sometimes we're talking about the drones, sometimes we're talking about software, sometimes we're talking about subscription services, drone mapping, 3D modeling, all of that shows up here on channel on a regular basis. I'm starting a new smaller series right now to bring you guys along. I'd like to learn something together. So we're going to start talking about Affinity Photo. Why are we talking about Affinity Photo? Because all of the things that have gone on with Adobe recently, a lot of folks are looking for alternatives to Adobe's subscription model and also some of their end user licensing agreements as well. And not to mention the FTC has filed suit against Adobe for its pricing practices apparently and its practices on unsubscribing from the services. So with all of that out there a lot of folks are looking to find an alternative for sure. Now I've been using Affinity Photo for a couple of years but only for a small fraction of the things I do um, for my drone images. So this is going to be a learning process together. I think this could be a lot of fun. We're going to keep each of these segments to 15 minutes or less, I promise you. And we're not going to cover big, huge topics in some areas because as you start to get to know Affinity Photo, if you're mad at Adobe, it's probably, you know, you're probably an Adobe Photoshop user, Lightroom user. So you've got some experience um, with photo editing with Adobe in particular. And when you check out Affinity Photo, you're going to see, hey, there's a lot of familiar stuff going on here. So by the way, I'm going to open up Affinity Photo in just a minute. I'm down in the lower right corner, so you can see me waving at you right now. So I'm blocking one of the menus down there. And as we get further into this series, um, we'll just take me out of there and we'll just look at the main screen. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and open up Affinity Photo. So I'm on Mac right now, and it's down on, it's down on my little toolbar for all of my applications, and I'm just going to click on Affinity Photo. So here it goes, and here it comes up. Now, Affinity Photo uh, always offers you, you can take this screen or you can get rid of this screen. Um, you can make it go away with show on startup right here. But so they've got a lot of presets for you as far as image size and what the image can be used for. So we can create right here on the left hand side, we've got our account. We can create a new image. We can open something new. We can go back through our recent items, our templates, and our lessons. I'm going to go ahead and just cancel that. And I'm just grabbing an image because you can also just grab an image off of your desktop or anywhere else. And so now we have a photo in Affinity Photo. Now we're not going to start doing things here. Um, first, I want you to just take a look around because this is pretty cool and it's probably very familiar to you. Uh, over on the left hand side, we have a lot of tools. Okay, So we've got our view tool, our move tool, uh, color picker tool, and on that one, it's got a little extra uh, arrow. When I click on it, there's a couple of options under there. And that should feel familiar to you as well. That's very similar to Adobe's Photoshop as well. Um, we've got the crop. We've got a selection brush. Um, we've got uh, different selections on the flood. Uh, we can also do rectangular marquees. So once again, a lot of this should feel familiar. And we've got a gradient tool, which is very familiar if you're uh, if you're playing around with your uh, images and want to add some gradients to them. We also have the paintbrush tool in here. We've got a color replacement tool, pixel tool, and the paintbrush tool. And so I'm not going to, we're not going to spend time on all these right now. This is the introduction to the whole series idea, okay? Um, the eraser brush tool, you can also background erase and flood erase and that is something that a lot of photographers will regularly use if they're replacing things cleaning things up or adding then we've also got the dodge and burn tools and we all remember those from photoshop um use those regularly especially when i was doing some portrait work we also have the clone brush so we can clone stamp things and once again a lot of these probably sound very similar uh, one of my favorites, one of the things that I use often, especially when we're doing 360 images and 360 images out in the field of the drone, um, we do have the in-painting brush tool. This was one of the reasons I bought um, Affinity Photo several years ago on a Black Friday sale. So 
there we go with that one and oh as you can see we've got a healing brush patch tool um blemish removal tool and then below that we've got the pen tool and the node tool and we've also got a warp tool and here's our text tool as well i'm not a big fan of how this text tool is we'll see that down the road together okay and so i promise we'll uh we'll get to see that but so there's our main tools and then if we zoom this back out here i'm just gonna whoops i didn't mean to do that and so i'm just gonna do uh, control z there and let's just move this there we go so up on top there are some things that are a little different the top menu bar should be familiar as well very similar to photoshop once again and what we have up here, we've got a couple interesting things. So they have a couple of, I'm going to call them workspaces. Um, they, uh, they call them personas. But number one, we have the photo persona. That's where we are right now. And then we can do a liquify persona. So doing liquefaction of images. I never used liquify. Um, you know, I'm not doing a lot of artistic stuff for the drone work that I do. But there could be reasons to have that. Um, then they have the develop persona. It's basically like being in the raw editor. Uh, they have the tone mapping persona for high dynamic range imaging and also the expert persona. So these things are a little different and we'll talk about those in later videos. Now up on that top bar, we do have a ton of tools. We've got our edit. We've got all of our stuff for text. If we want to add text, let's say the image in front of you is going to be used for a thumbnail on YouTube. Um, so we'd have the text most likely document. We do have a lot of different tools in here, uh, under the layers. One of the other things that I use often when I'm dealing with 360 photos is the live projection layer or live projection layer item where we can actually look at a 360 image as a 360, which is really cool. And some photo editor editors out there don't have a tool like this. So this is one of the other reasons why I purchased this so many years ago and what I use it for mostly. Then of course, they've got the selection tools, arrange tools, so you can arrange layers if you need to, filters, and then we also have our views, and we can actually, uh, we can show multiple additional tools here. And then here's the rest of our windows, and we could stack those up as well. Finally, right-hand side of this image. Hey, let's move this back down. Uh, right-hand side, we got the histogram and color. So we also have our layers here, and this is the biggie. What's, uh, what's always been one of the big, most powerful tools on Photoshop? Layers. And Affinity Photo hosts, or, uh, has layers as well. So you can make multiple layers on here and you can work with this very, very much like um, Photoshop. So you could add more panels in here and we can get some of those panels from the window. So we could grab these panels and put them over onto the right hand side. And look at that, I moved the uh, imaging and that's something I need to learn how to stop doing. By the way, so once again, here I am down in the lower right corner and there is a uh, additional uh, couple of tools down here that are hidden by me right now but we're not going to jump right into these because we're just starting out with this so the idea of this series and please let me know in the comments below if this is interesting to you the idea of this series is to give you a jump start into affinity photo and into a lot of the tools that if you're a drone operator who does still imaging real estate work um you're regularly editing your drone photos or your terrestrial land-based photos as well and so we're going to go through the big items in here. This isn't going to be a huge, um, this isn't going to be a huge tutorial series. There's a lot of tools, but like I said, if, if you're here and you're upset with the uh, Adobe and you're done with Adobe, this is going to be so very familiar to you. The one other thing I should mention is some of the shortcut keys, the labels are different for them. So sometimes I go to do something like I do in Photoshop and I hit the wrong shortcut key. So that's one thing to pay attention to. You're going to have to unlearn a couple of your, fa your, your Photoshop items and you know relearn the tools in Affinity Photo instead. So let me hear back from you guys. Are you interested in this? Would this be a good tutorial series? Would you like a um, more robust tutorial series where we go through this together? Because we could also do this over at classes.azdrone.net and then you could uh, be one of our course members and we could do a more in-depth course on this. Let me know down in the comments below. Just a short series here on YouTube or do you want to see even more in all of the tools and all of what we do 
with Affinity Photo 2. I'm going to be on this learning curve for several weeks myself. So, like I said, we're going to go through and learn about this together. All right, everybody, we'll see you again in the near future. Hope you're having an awesome week.